Thanks, Tim. Um, just a quick forward-looking statement. We will we'll be making some statements which are looking forward, so I encourage you to read that at some stage. So give you a bit of a background. The Timberborough Gold um, System was originally founded by Jens Pelkel, who was the exploration manager for Regis uh, for a number of years. And he led the, this ground as similar to what he did at Dukedon, where he basically walked in, followed the structural system and targeted uh, the place and walked away with 8 million ounces of gold roughly within that time frame. So to give you a background of it, so Tipperborough itself, we have a 10 year holding of about 2000 square kilometres within far west north, uh, far northwest of New South Wales, um, where we cover 220 kilometres of strike of proven gold bearing structures that has the potential to host multi-million ounce deposits. It's a similar geological setting to that of the epizonal um, orogenics Victorian gold fields, such as the higher grade Fosterville system. And it's had very, very little work to date. Um, Manhattan is about to kick off probably starting next week, uh, a 30,000 metre drilling campaign based over the next four to five months. Um, which is going to see a lot of news come through to the market and give us a really great opportunity within the system. And this is following up recent drilling that we've done at a place called New Bendigo, where we intersected 30 metres at four, including five metres at near 21 and seven metres at 18 in shallow systems at surface. So to give you an idea, so in the top left-hand corner, um, Part of that figure, you can see the uh, tenure package. So it's a fairly large package and it really covers the, um, the two main gold bearing structures within that system. So it's well serviced by sealed roads from Broken Hill uh, with regu reg regular scheduled flights into the area and the township of Tibberborough to the northwest, which is on the Grey Nomad tourist trail. So if we go to the next slide, please. So this is what we sort of see. So basically that's our 10 year package to date. And we run pretty much from the south down at Mungrel all the way up through to the new Bendigo and further up to what we call Pioneer itself. And also along the Coonaberry. So these are really two um, distinct gold conduit fault systems that run through there. It's mineralized all the way through these systems. And we are looking for large gold targets with multi-million ounce potential within that system. So to run it through, down, uh, can I just go back a bit? So down at Mungrel, uh, we have basically distinct hydrothermal breccia systems associated with gold, a six kilometer soil anomaly, which just needs drilling. To do and then we can follow that all the way through Coonaberry Gap and North Gap where we have significant mineralization in old workings and then we come up to where we're probably more advanced and what we could term the old Albert Goldfield up around the new Bendigo and Big Ego system itself where we've been drilling of late. So if we just run to the next slide please. So at New Bendigo this is probably our most thing. So New Bendigo sits on the southern part of this sort of structure. And in the further north of that, we have Pioneer. So New Bendigo, we went in there, we've done two drill campaigns to date, really just targeting the shallow mineralization. We've extended the mineralized footprint and controls over 600 meters to date. And we have some significant intersections within that, including the 30 at four, which included the five at 21, the seven at 18, and as, um, as you can see, five from five at 7.71 and a few other intersections. That's all from RC and diamond drilling. And that's where we're going to go and target some further RC drilling next year. So the idea, so if New Bendigo itself sits in a five kilometer, can I just go to the next slide? So New Bendigo itself sits within a five kilometer corridor, uh, sheared corridor, where we've only really tested the 600 meters today. It's two zones. 
with an old working structures and everything else that extend for two kilometers in one zone and 1.7 kilometers in the other zone from the old guys that have been working the system. And it's never really been tested to its full extent over that strike. And to the north, about eight kilometers to the north, there's also more further workings where 25 grams per tonne rock chips have been uh, tested, uh, uh, taken, and that has had no drilling to date as well. So we're just gonna go in and chase it extensively and, and drill the whole thing. So I might just skip to the next slide. And so the next few slides sort of run through the new Bendigo story and, and the targeting of the Southern licenses and everything else and where we see the big input drivers within this system. But I'm gonna roughly, given the, the time frame that we have, I'm gonna skip through these and head off down to slide 13, if I may. Keep going, yep, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's the one. So on this slide, uh, unfortunately it's a little bit uh, covered by some, my things on that, but you can basically see in the pink outline, these are the geochemical anomalies that exist over a 20 kilometer plus strike link. So in the southern extent of that, we have New Bendigo where the soil anomaly extends for over five kilometers and up in the north, we have the Pioneer system, which is an old mining uh, structure that goes for over two kilometers. Uh, where they started installing a battery back in the old gold fields itself. And where drilling has returned three metres at 4.89 and two metres at 14.7. And at Pioneer, I actually think that the better part of that system has not been tested to date and needs to be drilled extensively further, especially to the south. Um, the new Bendigo itself, you might see a little red shaded area within that five kilometre long anomaly. That's the 600 metres that we've defined to date in drilling. It's open in all directions, north, south, east, west and down dip and needs uh, much, much more RC drilling, which is planned to take place in the early part of next year. So the white dots that we see within that map is testing the system. So what we are trying to do now is we know we have a mineralized system. We're probably on the edge of establishing a resource. And now what we're trying to do is enlarge that resource base and make it much larger and increase the grade system of that by targeting the higher grade mineralization. So the white dots, we're just going to extend the footprint of the drilling using um, air core drilling, which will give us a relatively cheap, clean way to go. And then we're going to move up the structure and expand the footprint so that we get through that area. The other thing that we're doing at the moment is we're going to come in and do some diamond drilling at New Bendigo itself. Now, this is really targeting the high grade uh, intersections that we have to date. So we will be twinning and drilling in between high grade hits to establish the structural controls of the mineralization because we know we have a, comp a structural component in there which is controlling our high grade. Uh, it's a high strain feature that runs through the system. And by targeting that, we can, when we come back and do our RC drilling, we can really hit and chase those high grade systems going forward and move the grade up from you know, it's something that may be a two gram system to a plus three or four gram system. And that's what we're sort of doing. The air core will commence next week and hopefully towards the end of next week, uh, maybe early next week, we'll start that diamond drilling. So there's gonna be further news coming through that and we will continue drilling these targets up through till Christmas and then restart early next year is the plan. On top of that, we also have another trend, which is the Big Ego trend and Big Ego Northwest. And we know this is highly anomalous for gold. It comes through that system and pops up at hot soil with an extremely elevated amount of geochemistry in gold. And we just need to drill that. There's a big decentralized magnetic feature at Big Ego, uh, demagnetized feature at Big Ego. And the New South Wales survey has identified that demagnetization within Coonaberry is actually a big indicator of the gold. So that's where we sort of sit. Lots of meters that we're gonna go in. There's 20,000 meters of air core to be done. 
we'll be doing about a thousand meters of diamond and we're going to be following that up with a further 10,000 meters of reverse circulation drilling next year. So it's pretty heavy and we'll be going at it from there. So we're fully funded for that and we'll go from there. Thanks, Kel. Um, you've got a, a big drilling program ahead. Can, I know you just touched on funding then. Can you talk to kind of funding and, and timelines moving forward? Yeah, so currently we have 3.4 million in the bank. The, the drilling that we've outlined is about $2 million and this will see us through to March, April next year in this drilling campaign. And, and then we'll be driving, and it'll be results driven from there. And we expect to get some significant mineralization in this program. And, and, and what is the, what, what are your thoughts? You're a geologist. What do you think of the, you know, what is the potential for the new Bendigo to Pioneer Strike in terms of ounces? I haven't seen a project like this in Australia in terms of a control aspect of a fairly mature gold system, orogenic gold system for it, um, in probably my lifetime. You look at a lot of the West Australian things, it's, they're quite patchy, you know, multiple tenements spaced apart. On this, we control the gold feeding structures for over 220 kilometres. It is a significant project and it's going to deliver some significant value. And Jens and I believe that it has the potential to host multiple million ounce deposits within the system. We just need to work it. And um, how, do you, how do you acquire packages like this with, with so much potential? Oh, it's quite an interesting one. I actually went to university in New South Wales and, and being quite honest, we never really looked past Broken Hill. <laughs> um, you know, that was where all the action was. So this came about because Jens and another gentleman went out there looking for base metal projects oh, about over a decade ago uh, around Broken Hill and they, they stumbled across as what they refer to as the old Albert Goldfield and then there's the K Runner and Nugget Field and a few other things within this package. And they just went, wow, this is amazing. And they started acquiring the package 10 years ago and, and we've added to that package since. And, and it, is a, uh, it is a big land package, kind of, what, what is the, the status of kind of a traditional owner access to the land and for later development? Um, this question here, the New South government, New South Wales government has sometimes provided kind of roadblocks for development uh, along oh, the New South look. Wales. Yeah, th th this area is centred on uh, what we call Western land leases, which is probably similar to what a pastoral lease in Western Australia. And um, from there, it's under those agreements, we get access and a few things. We just have to go through that process. The In terms of the native title and traditional owners, things, uh, native title has actually been... Um, ex made extinct in a lot of this area because there hasn't been an association. So, and it's, and the land access and the historic aspects are, are very, very tight. So, 